Greetings, Mavuno. My name is Pastor Maridi Wenjao, Pastor M, and it's my joy to welcome you today as you worship with us. We're so excited that you're part of our community today. Uh, I've been uh, preparing us every, uh, this month for something exciting that is coming up uh, in the new year. We're calling it the Free the Future campaign. And what we're doing is we're trusting God that we'll be able to pay off uh, the mortgage that we owe as a movement of churches uh, for our Hill City campus, our headquarters, which is based in Nairobi. And that would free us to be able to, as a, as a, as a movement, uh, begin to do some, some big moves when it comes to just capital uh, acquisitions for the movement of churches, buying land and planting churches across the world, which is part of our vision. And so as we prepare to hear God's word, I just want to continue uh, uh, mentioning a few things about this campaign just to bring you up to speed uh, and some questions that people have been sharing. One of the questions that people ha has, has come up often when we talk about tithes, uh, which we talked about last week, and fast food offering is, are these, uh, uh, are these practices uh, something that was practiced in the New Testament or taught in the New Testament. I mean, after all, many of the references in Scripture that we talk about are usually from the Old Testament. When somebody talks about tithing, when somebody talks about the first fruits. Now, the question, and I want to just begin by saying this, tithing or fast fruit offering, none of them is actually taught explicitly in the New Testament. You need to know that. Uh, in fact, Jesus condemned the Pharisees because of the way they applied tithing. He says in Matthew chapter 23, verse 23 to 24, Woe to you! teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you've neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and fairness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. Now, it's very interesting. Jesus was against these guys who are actually tithing. I need to say this, however, that Jesus was not against tithing, but he was against how the leaders were doing it. He said you should have continued tithing, yes, but there's something wrong with the way that you're doing it. There's something wrong with your heart. You see, you can't bribe God. You can't come with gifts to church, and we see this uh, in many of our nations today. Uh, people coming to, with gifts to, to, uh, to church, but yet on, on during the week, the rest Monday to Saturday, you're practicing oppression of the people who work for you. You're practicing corruption. God cannot be bribed. And I think this is what Jesus is alluding to uh, when he's talking about this. Now, neither fruits, fast fruits or tithing is taught in the, in the New Testament, but the New Testament injunction is that God's people are to give generously and to give cheerfully in response to God's grace to us. Uh, Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 8, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compassion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. And I believe that as we become more and more aware of what Jesus has done for us, the more we move from giving out of duty to giving out of love and out of delight. And so I want to just encourage us. I mean, this is why the New Testament talks about being cheerful givers. It's like the Old Testament people, they might have given out of duty. But for us who understand grace, for us who've been saved by Jesus, oh my goodness, how we overflow in thanksgiving uh, for what he has done for us in our giving. And so in 2022, uh, we're challenging us as a church in addition to giving our tithes faithfully this year. Some of us, that's going to be a journey in itself because that's not something we've practiced in the past. But we're challenging every single one of us to tithe uh, to the campus that you go to. If you come to the online campus, uh, that you would tithe there as well. And in addition to that, we want to even challenge you to go a step farther and to give a fast fruit offering over and above your tithe, a month's income over and above your tithe that will help us free our future as a church family. And if you'd like to know more about this, just go on our website and you'll be able to learn more. Just click on the Free the Future button, you'll be able to learn more about that. Now, I'm excited because this is going to be an adventure of faith. Already we have some amazing testimonies of people who've experienced God's grace in powerful ways, grown in their faith amazingly because of the steps they've taken as they've practiced uh, generosity. Now, free, feel free to write us if you have any questions or any thoughts uh, you'd like us to address about this. Uh, use the, the email info at mavunochurch.org and I'd be delighted to air your questions here. Now, as we prepare to hear God's word and also to just uh, celebrate Christmas this coming weekend, allow me to pray for us as we give of our tithes and our offerings. Father, I thank you for your people. I thank you because, Lord, we're here because you gave. Your word says God so loved the world that he gave. And that's why we're here, Lord. And Lord, I thank you because you're calling us to grow, to be more and more like you, to become givers as well. And so, Father, even as we practice the things I've shared, I know some of us are not giving because we're giving out of plenty, but we're giving even from our need. 
And that's an amazing thing because that is where we practice and exercise our faith. I pray for every family in Mavuno Church as we exercise faith, as we step out in thanksgiving and give towards you, uh, as we prepare our hearts even for growing in our faith and our, our, our generosity in the year to come. I pray that Lord Jesus, you would bless us with boldness, bless us with faith, bless us with an ever-growing love for you. And I pray that as a result, we would see great things happening in our lives, miracles, uh, and, and see answers to prayer as we step out in trusting you uh, in ways we haven't before. I speak a blessing over every family here. And I pray that, Lord, even as we celebrate Christmas, we will do it with an uh, increasing awareness of what it means to have God with us. Prepare our hearts for your word even now as we prepare to hear it, Lord. For we ask these things in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. God's people say, Amen.